If you're headed to Tokyo, Japan, Team Lab Borderless is an immersive experience like no other that you do not want to miss. I cannot tell you how much I'm looking forward to this. They have recently reopened in their now permanent location at Azubudai Hills and in today's video, I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know about Team Lab Borderless. From how to get tickets to how to get there and the best possible time to visit in order to avoid crowds. I'll also be giving you a little walkthrough slash sneak preview of the venue whilst telling you about all the things that you need to be aware of before and during your visit. Consider this your ultimate guide to Team Lab Borderless. By the way, hi, I'm Steve from the Fat Life Project at my channel. It's all about showing you fat things to see, eat, do and try in cities across the world. So definitely click on that subscribe button if that is your vibe. With that out of the way, let's start with what exactly is Team Lab Borderless. In short, it is the best immersive exhibition you will ever experience in your life. Team Lab Borderless is the world's first digital art museum which first opened in Odaiba on June 21st, 2018 and quickly became a popular attraction with locals and tourists alike. Thanks to the museum's exhibits that are designed to challenge all of your senses including sight, hearing, smell and taste. The Odaiba's location closed on August 31st, 2022 before moving to its current new location at Azabudai Hill where it opened its doors to visitors once again in February 2024 this year. Finding your way to the exhibition center is pretty straightforward. It is located on the basement floor at the Mori building. If you're catching public transport, the closest station is the Kamiacho station on the Tokyo Metro Hibiya line. Once you get there, you need to locate exit 1 and from there, Team Lab Borderless is a roughly 8 minute walk away. I have also included the exact Google map pin of the museum's location in case you plan to take other forms of transportation to get there. So here we are at the Digital Art Museum. But you're gonna want to pay attention to this next section if you're looking to get tickets. Tickets for your desired date goes on sale on the Team Lab website two months prior, so definitely recommend you book ahead to avoid disappointments. Another thing you need to be aware of is that you will not be able to change the date for any tickets you purchased online. This can only be done for tickets that were purchased at their ticketing counter. I personally purchased mine through Kluk. No, this is not a sponsored ad, and spent 28 of my own. US dollars or around 40 Australian dollars. I just found the booking process on Kluke to be a lot more intuitive. The opening time for the exhibition is from 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. seven days a week. I went right at opening time and whilst I didn't have to queue or wait for too long, there were a lot of people for a Friday morning. If you're looking to go when there are less people so that you can capture all your Instagram worthy shots or you're just looking to avoid crowds, the best time to go would be towards closing time. It took me about three hours to see everything so the best time to go would be around 6 p.m. As it does take a few hours for you to navigate through the museum, I would strongly recommend you wear comfortable clothing and most importantly comfortable shoes when you're going there. Also, don't forget to eat something prior as there is no food available inside the museum. Speaking of Instagram worthy shots, you are allowed to bring your phone, camera and other recording devices in. However, tripods, monopods and selfie sticks are prohibited which I can understand since there are many uneven surfaces within the borderless museum and also just the sheer amount of foot traffic going through the museum would make any form of tripod or monopod setup severely impractical and frankly quite dangerous. I actually used a DJI Osmo Pocket that has an inbuilt gimbal and that suited my purposes just fine. Another thing you need to be aware of is you will be asked to check in your bags in a locker room before entering the venue. Don't worry, you will come out from the museum via the same exit and can easily pick up your bags there. There is also a lack of signage to give you directions within the borderless museum and making it a very pick your own adventure kind of experience. So in the following section, I'm going to be giving you a little overview of the space, what to expect and also highlight some of the exhibits that are in my opinion unmissable. Team Lab Borderless is a 10,000 square meter space comprising over 50 exhibits laid out in five main sections. Borderless World, Athletics Forest, Future Park, Forest of Lamps and the NT House. Each contains 
contains its own little adventure. As the name suggests, the artwork you see here are indeed borderless and not bound to the confines of the space they're in. You might just see an animal or pattern that you saw in one room suddenly appear in another room later on, which I think is the most fascinating thing about this museum. No two people can have the same experience. I mean, you and someone else could be in the same room and see totally different things. And even you yourself would never run out of things to see. The artwork in each space is constantly being updated. You could literally go around the gallery five times and discover something new every single time. The artwork in each space is accompanied with a musical symphony and in some rooms you will even smell flowers or incense coming out from seemingly nowhere. And unlike most museums, they also encourage you to touch, disrupt and even add to the exhibits as each artwork changes depending on the audience participation. How amazing is that? In the next part here, I'm going to be showing you some of my favorite exhibits and highlights within Team Lab Borderless. So if you don't want any spoilers, feel free to skip ahead to the last chapter where I talk about my overall thoughts on the entire Team Lab Borderless experience. And if you're still here in 3, 2 and 1, let me now show you some of my highlights. I had seen the crystal world space all over TikTok and Instagram and it indeed did not disappoint. If you are artistic, then be sure to check out the Future Park Sketch Aquarium where you can draw your art and have it displayed live within the room. You can even have your art printed on a shirt and delivered to you at the counter. It is definitely a great experience for kids or even kids at heart like myself. Another thing I really enjoyed at Borderless was the tea house within the museum. Hi. Uh, uh, just one. I'll have a cold brew, please. Maybe the uh, green tea? Green tea? Yes. Once you've ordered your tea, you are led inside to a dark room and seated on a long table that's covered with a black tablecloth. Before long, the tea comes along and once it's placed on your table, you will realize why many people have raved about this tea house. A realistic digital projection appears on the tea which looks like a flower that's constantly blooming out of the cup of tea itself before it wilts and scatter its petals and leaves across the room. Honestly, I was so mesmerized by this that I almost forgot to to drink the tea and when I did I made sure to do it as slow as possible so that I could make the experience last as long as possible. Definitely recommend you check out the end tea house. I also really enjoyed the flower forest which is literally swirls of flowers of many types making their way across a huge space. The memory of topography was another highlight for me. The space recreates a paddy field for you to venture through as the color changes to depict the four seasons in a year. It was stunning. I also really enjoyed the space that were full of samurai projections dancing to a chant. <laughs> And guys, the lamp forest is absolutely admissible. Is it not obvious why? Okay, so I've just finished Team Lab Borderless. Took me about took me roughly about two hours to complete two and a bit hours to complete thing. If you've got family with you or friends, it might take you a bit longer. I would suggest maybe allocating about three hours or so to get through the exhibit. 
everything was stunning though. It is truly the immersive experience to end all immersive experiences. Would I do it again? Mm, I think if you've seen it, you've seen it. But if they do change the exhibit, I might. But all in all, for 28 US dollars, I feel that the experience was well worth it. I, in fact, would have been willing to pay more if I'm being honest. I think it is an experience that is truly worth doing when you're in Tokyo. If you've been doing your research for things to do in Tokyo and found Team Lab Borderless, there is a very good chance that you've also already come across Team Lab Planet and are probably wondering oh, what's the difference? Which one is worth seeing? What if I could only see one? Which one shall it be? Well, in my next video, I will be comparing Team Lab Borderless and Team Lab Planets so that you can make that decision for yourself since I went to both. So if you don't want to miss out on that, make sure to click on the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you can be the first one to know when that video drops. Also, please do like this video if you found it helpful and informative. If it was helpful, please do drop me a comment below as I love hearing from all of you. And if you got to this part of the video, I want to thank you so much for watching. It really does mean everything. As always, I hope that you have a fantastic day ahead or that you've already had a good day. I will see you very soon in the next video. Ciao!